All right, good afternoon. Seeing that it is 4.15, we are going to go ahead and convene a meet meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee. Uh, I'll welcome uh, our members to, to join us. Uh, we are looking at 13 contracts. Is that still the case? Yes. Okay. Mr. Saris, Mr. Dixit, how are you guys? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, our first item today is digital media instructional resources. So this is a new contract for a web-based repository of educational videos and resources that we've been using uh, since 2010 to support students and teachers in grades K through 8. Approval is requested for a three-year, two-month contract with one recommended vendor and contract spending authority of $500,000. And the product is Brain Pop. Brain Pop. Okay. Ms. Ann? Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Good evening. Um, Brain Pop lists their pricing. They're pretty transparent listing their pricing on the website. And I took a look at all of their product offerings. And for three years, that pricing came to just over 400000 So I'm curious why a spending authority of 500000 is requested. And that it was around 403000 I want to say, after 25% district discount. So, so can you speak you to the spending authority of 500? Yeah, so is the pricing, you're, you went on their website and got a pricing? For all of their services. So if we were services. to purchase everything they offer, it was just over 400000 okay. Ms. And for clarification for me, was that plugging in the amount of students that we have, the amount of resources that we need, so you were able to input all that data? Exactly. Into They're very transparent in their pricing, which was, was nice Did you see. speak with anyone there, or is it just a algorithm They're or program? Advertised pricing. Okay. So I have an agreement which has some pricing with discounts in it. Um, and I'll read this and then we'll see if Mr. Imbriali has any additional details. So in the first subscription year, we're receiving a discount of 43%. In the second year, 33% discount third year 22% discount, fourth year 11% discount, and the fifth year there will be no discount. And this uh, is for uh, Brain Pop, Brain Pop Junior, Brain Pop Espanol, Brain Pop Francais, and I think any more details we'll have to ask. Mr. Embriali to provide. So this is the agreement that mm -hmm. I have. Uh, so one of the things that we're trying to do is get the best pricing we can over a number of years with, with Brain Pop as an organization. And in working with Brain Pop, uh, they are discontinuing their discount to school districts in the after this school year. And I don't know what that percent is, but the discount that you're seeing on that website would not necessarily be there again next year at that same rate. And so we were working with Brain Pop to get the best price we could. We, um, the way the process has worked since 2005 with Brain Pop is we were part of the MDK 12 consortium, which we are as a district, but Brain Pop stepped away from that consortium. So we don't have consortium pricing with them anymore. Each individual district who purchases Brain Pop have, has to work with them individually. We did go to Brain Pop specifically and work with them as um, an organization to try to get the best possible fr price for the for the district over a three year. In this case, this is we're asking the board for three years of contract spending authority. Sure, and um, by my research, that three years, according to their listed price with no negotiation, was just over four hundred thousand. So, with a twenty five percent dis district discount based on our number of schools. So I'm trying to understand how that's. Um, a good deal with with a spending authority of five hundred thousand. If their list price is four hundred thousand. Well, this is more. This is a multi-year agreement. It's, it's a multi-year agreement. Multiple year <clears throat> across three years. So you came up with four hundred thousand annually for three years and two months. Huh? Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, in the interim, why don't we uh, either we'll, we'll hold this contract in abeyance and take a look at it, or you can 
take a look at it before our meeting tonight and provide us with more information for our understanding and review as we move forward. Um, let's move on to our next item. Okay. Oh, Ms. Causey, do you have questions? I'm sorry. That are distinct from what Ms. Hen was asking. I certainly um, concur with her concerns about us paying more than we need as to. Do, as do we all, we I'm sure. We have an incredible amount of unmet needs in the school system as demonstrated by eight schools and two program centers that were unable to open due to lack of air conditioning for the first three days of school. So every penny counts in every single area so that we can meet the basic needs of our students. So I wanted to clarify that we will not be bringing this contract out. Uh, we will not be approving it for the full board. So we're gonna I make a motion that we hold this contract until the next meeting. Second. I think as a committee, we only make motions as it relates to recommending for approval or not to the full board. We don't change the agenda of what the full board's going to discuss. So you can make that motion to the full board, and I think you, we're gonna have that conversation. The full board will have the benefit of it. No, actually, I think according to Robert's rules of order, the committee can make decisions to hold <coughs> items. If the committee reports to the board, the committee can report to the board its recommendation that the board hold the item. But I don't think the board, I don't think the committee has the authority to take a contract out of the hands of the board by deferring it uh, without the board having any input into it. In policy review committee, if we feel a policy needs more work, we hold it in committee to the next committee meeting. Right, but what I'm saying is that this is changing the agenda that's been set for the board, which would need to be a unanimous act anyway, or by motion during the meeting. We would be changing the committee's own agenda as a first step before we take this contract to the full board. You'll notice the agenda has been set for this evening for a board meeting and includes these contracts. Correct. So I make a motion that the Building and Contracts Committee, I withdraw my former motion, I make a motion that the Building and Contracts Committee recommends to the full board that we hold this contract until the next Building and Contracts Committee. Okay, second. Is that the full okay, so I will comment on that to say that I, in the interest of information, because I think that's our job as a system, is actually to hear what our members, our team members have to say. Um, <coughs> we should hear from them at the full board meeting. Um, I would advise that we do that. Is this so all in favor? She's saying Very good. I am opposed. Uh, we will have that as a recommendation to our full board when we consider the matter. Our second item <coughs> is um, alternative communication devices. This is a new competitively bid contract for augmentative and alternative communication devices for students with special needs. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the option for a five-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,238,583. And this uh, spending authority is based on the initial five-year term so that we would come back to the board if we wanted to make a recommendation to exercise the uh, five-year extension. Okay, questions? <coughs> Is that Thank you. Can you speak to the window of time that this solicitation was of open for bid? And was it standard? My concern is that we only received one bid um, amongst the 13 vendors. I'll probably have to ask either Ms. Webster or an agent to see if they brought that, the advertisement. Uh, with them. We did not bring the advertisement with us, but it was open for a four to five week window. Can you which provide? Is typical. Thank you. Can you provide us any insight as to why we only received one proposal? Was there a unique requirement um, that you know of? I believe. Do you have any information on your bids? I don't. We'll have to check and see if we received any no bids for this contract, um, which could explain why certain companies did not provide pricing. Um, off the top of my head, I, we advertise in our typical locations and who picks up, picks up. And I think, we, I think that the office who we worked with 
gave us the names of some companies that they had worked with in the past and we shared the advertisement with them. Mm -hmm. They chose not to, to bid on it. Okay. I would like to know if we did receive any no bids and what those reasons would be maybe for the full board. Provide that information, Mr. Saris. Great. Thank you. Ms. Gossie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Was this contract discussed at a curriculum meeting? Um, I believe so. Uh, yeah, yes, it was discussed at the August Curriculum Committee. Okay, thank you, because normally that's noted on our contract summaries, but I didn't see it here, but I remembered watching the meeting and hearing about it. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that was the, the same contract. It, it was. Okay, and can I ask the, in the contract summary, it's saying that our average annual expenditures on the former contract were 86,000 um, with a total contract expenditure of 8,600, 868,000. Um, and this contract spending authority is for 1238000 So is that across so the 10 the years? It, so correct. So the average, actually in 2016, we spent $111,000. In 2017, that number went up to $129,216. Uh, and then um, in 2018, the number was 201,806. So based on the increased needs that we're seeing for these specific communication devices for students who have identified IEPs, um, that number continues to grow. So that's why we're seeing this contract spending authority at the number it is. Okay, and how many students will be helped by this? We do have that number. Kimmel, what's the number again? There's 118, there was 118 last year and to start this school year. And so how long do these students, are they able to keep the devices? So it's identified by their, by their, by their specific needs and their IEPs. These are, these are significantly impaired students who need these types of services. So it's most likely that these students would keep these devices for an extended period of time. It could be to age 21, depending on the student. And then the other part that's important about these devices is we try to get fairly rugged devices that last for an extended period of time that have strong warranties as well. So we can continue to update the software on those products and make sure that it, that they, that they meet the needs of the specific students. And is this the same vendor that we used in the former contract? Um, the uh, the spending uh, previous spending history does uh, reflect it, this. Vendor. They were they were this vendor, and I think there were other vendors that participated as well. But this vendor participated last year or in the prior years with this contract. Okay. So did they? Did we end up procuring over $500,000 worth of communication devices from this vendor? I'm wondering if there's a vendor performance. There, uh, that, uh, there was one done for this. Yes, there was a vendor performance evaluation done. Okay, it would be helpful in the future to have those vendor performances sent to the Building and Contracts Committee along with the contracts. If we're talking about going back to a former vendor, it makes it much easier to uh, have confidence that we're buying something that we can depend on. I don't believe that $500,000 provision has been adopted yet, has it? That's the way it's been. That's the policy that... Well, I, th I think the way the current policy read is at the end of the contract period, and that's what was recommended to be changed. Yes. So. That was my question, why was there a, that's why I asked the question, was there a vendor evaluation done? Because in this case, it's because it was expiring on September 30th. Um, we were requested to do a, a vendor performance evaluation and did complete that. Okay, and that was satisfactory? It was, yes. Okay, great, thank you. Further questions? Very good, our third contract is public notice, um, conscious discipline. This is a contract modification that is critical to the focus on school climate and will provide for the continued professional development and instructional materials to expand socio-emotional learning to all elementary grade levels. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2,384,000 due to the availability of MSDE grant funds 
bringing total contract spending authority to $2,659,000 with one awarded vendor already approved by the board uh, in July 2017. And of this uh, increased spending authority, uh, approximately 584,000 is for the t a Title IV grant and 1.8 million is estimated uh, in Title I spending by individual schools. <clears throat> Can you speak at all to the pilot study and our results as it relates there too? Uh, I, th I think Megan Shea will be able to address those questions. Great. Do you feel me coming? When <laughs> yeah. Good evening or afternoon, I guess. So yes, um, we and uh, we've brought this actually to curriculum committee multiple times to report on the update um, on this process. So um, this is the social emotional learning. So the data that we have is not um, necessarily achievement data, with the exception of the kindergarten readiness assessment. Um, so for the kindergarten readiness assessment, after we implemented this in our pre-K classes, we did see increases in the kindergarten readiness data for that cadre of children, um, specifically in the areas of language and literacy and overall, which includes a social emotional component. Um, we also assessed this success based on professional development surveys done with teachers um, and additional staff members, and we had 100% of our PD participants in both pre-K and K indicate that this was um, beneficial, developmentally appropriate, and useful for the work they were doing in their classroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Ms. Kazi. So you mentioned the, in the breakdown of the funds available that 1.8 million would be coming from Title I funds. Are those additional Title I funds specifically geared towards social emotional instructional materials or are those Title I, 1.8 million in Title I funds that we currently receive and are currently using elsewhere at this point? I believe they're from the existing grant The uh, and the schools have discretion over uh, developing their uh, school performance plans and uh, and we have estimated that they might right. wish to use as much as six hundred thousand dollars a year between all 62 schools 62. so so what we did to be able to calculate an appropriate spending authority um, that's predictive of the next three years is we identified what is the cost for the PD for an individual school and then we um, multiplied over the number of title one schools that could potentially use it over the course of the year so for example uh, the two-day training is eight thousand dollars coaching days are three thousand dollars and then the Institute is a thousand dollars so we use twelve thousand dollars as an average of of what a Title I school might spend in a given year for professional learning. Um, and then using the number of Title I schools that could potentially choose this, while also knowing that we do have some non-Title I schools, it's a lot harder for them to find funding, but we have had some non-Title I schools that have prioritized this and used some of their operating budget um, to purchase um, professional development. So that 1.8 is not um, an automatic spend. It's us trying to calculate potential spending authority if that number of Title I schools were to decide to pursue this for professional learning. And non-grant funded schools can also elect with their own operating budgets to use the, take advantage of the program. So that's why we have both operating budget and grants listed, although it's not expected to be enough to change this spending authority. Okay, so it's not any new or additional grants. There is an additional grant from Title, Title IV. IV. So the Title IV additional grant, which is new, is what's allowing us to do the initial purchase of the materials and PD grade level by grade level. So we anticipate doing that one grade level at a time, beginning with second grade. The Title I funds would be just asking for spending authority should Title I schools choose to use their Title I funds to pursue additional professional learning for their staff at their school. Okay, my concern is that our schoolhouse budgets have decreased over the last six years. Um, I believe it's close to 50%. So we're, we're already asking our schoolhouses and our principals to make a lot of very hard decisions about how they're gonna spend that money. So I'm concerned that if there's not any new money being put in the schoolhouse budget and they're being asked, encouraged to do another program that 
that may take away from some other need that they have. Ms. White, yes. could you comment on the notion that we've cut funding by 50% for our schoolhouses? Yes, that's that's untrue. That'd be great. Um, that is actually untrue. And again, these are many of the purchases that you're talking about are centralized purchases. and that are no longer on the school's uh, responsibility. But in terms of this contract, it's important to note that schools are requesting yes. um, conscious discipline. And as far as the next contract as well for restorative practices, this is completely aligned with our uh, goals towards school climate, um, making sure that we provide for the social emotional learning. Many times uh, we see the, a lot of these behaviors bubbling up at the elementary level. And so when people are saying, well, do something and teach um, how to teach students how to behave appropriately, teach them conflict resolution. This is an effort to teach them how to do so and how to behave appropriately. And so this is a program that we know works. Our schools are choosing this program. So if they choose to use their Title I programs for this, this contract gives them the, uh, the authority to be able to do so. So I happen to be a proponent of our focus on school discipline and climate, and what we're saying here is that this is specifically tailored to those efforts. Is that correct? Yes, okay. absolutely. Other questions? All right, our next contract is Excuse number, me. yes. I wanted to make a motion that we uh, recommend this contract to the full board for one year rather than three. Sure, let's handle motions at the end. Okay. Number four is restorative practices, professional development. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide continued professional learning and consultation and using restorative practices to build stronger positive relationships between staff and students. Approval is requested to extend the contract term for an additional three years and increase spending authority by 1.5 million, bringing the revised total spending authority to 1.7 million with three awarded vendors approved by the board in January 2017. And this is also uh, primarily a grant funded program and we've listed the various uh, historical spending proportions in bullet two. Questions? Ms. Causey. So just getting back to the breakdown between operating budget and grants, and is any of this spending uh, supported by new grants, or are these the original Title I and Title IV grants that are uh, school Well, the Title IV received? grant is the new grant um, as of uh, this fiscal year. Uh, the other uh, funds are existing funds. Thank you. All right. Our next contract is number five, student growth and achievement assessment. This is a new competitively bid contract for a student growth an achievement assessment program for the Department of, or the Division, well, Department of Performance Management and Assessment. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder. That should be singular and contract spending authority of $4 million. Questions, committee members? Ms. Causey. So is this an extension of our use of the MAP assessment or is this an additional software assessment tool? So it's not a contract extension. It is a new contract that recommends the continued use of MAP okay. as a benchmark assessment. So it is MAP. It's not some other additional assessment. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. Our next contract is number six, transportation of selected students. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide continued transportation 
of selected students for the Office of Transportation and the transportation of selected employees for the Office of Human Resources Operations. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $425,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to 1075000 with eight uh, awarded vendors approved in February 2015. And I'll uh, note also that uh, we will be rebidding this contract and coming back to the board uh, in February of 2019. Uh, but until then, we wanted to make sure that uh, we maintained uh, expenditures within an approved amount. And to maintain service. Yes. Right. Questions? Ms. Causey. Can you delineate how much of the increase and how much of the totals are related to transporting our students versus transporting our employees and just explain a little bit about transporting our employees? I, I don't know if we have any data. I'll check with... Uh, Mr. Patillo, but it's by far the majority of uses for students and employees are transported when there's a need to do a drug test or something similar to that. Yeah, at, at this point it's hard to predict um, based on the number of employees that would be sent for reasonable suspicion testing, but this contract would allow for transportation so that school system personnel would not need to transport. Okay, thank you. So, I don't, yeah. That's all the information we have. Uh, if there's anything else, I'll bring it back this evening. Okay. Mr. Chair. Ms. Ed. Do we know approximately and approximately how many students um, will benefit from the, the service? Um, Good evening. Good evening. There are different services that are provided that are covered through this contract. So with the private transport, um, in 2018, there were 18 students who were transported by, via private transport. And taxi cab, that does vary. Um, we were nearing um, 45 students um, last year as well. So for all student services, a total of 45 <coughs> students? They're broken out through, through the different modes of transportation. Mm -hmm. So with taxi cab, that is the majority of the transportation that's covered under this contract, and there are approximately 45. Thank you. Ms. Causey? Could you explain a little bit about why you utilize taxi cabs at certain times? Sure. Taxi cabs are utilized um, usually as a mode of transportation, typically for students who are displaced and we have a certain time frame to, to provide them transportation. Um, oftentimes that requires buses to be rerouted and they're out of the, the school's normal transport zone. So it may be going to Baltimore City and that requires more elaborate um, transportation revisions and sometimes we will use taxi cabs for that. We work in conjunction with DSS when, when providing that transportation. So if the student is coming to us from DSS, they have uh, often already set up that taxi cab transportation and we continue it until we provide a uh, school bus. There are other instances where we're working with um, the schools and the school may feel that uh, the child will not meet with success on a bus given um, different concerns that are going on with the, ch with the child and sometimes we do provide taxi cabs for that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. So I see that the funding source is 100% operating budget. Um, there are no grants available for these students to receive the service. Is that correct or have we pursued any opportunities for grant funding? Uh, no, none of the regular state uh, funds other than what we get for transportation generally mm -hmm. are designed around this specific service. So if you look at the foundation grant, it includes 30 to 35 million annually. We spend 
closer to 70 million and uh, that supports the program in total, but mm -hmm. there are no grants uh, that we've been able to identify for this, for just the homeless population. The, the McKinney-Vento legislation right. was an unfunded mandate, you must do this. And, you know, homeless students make up a significant percentage of the transported students. Thank you. Our next contract is number seven, insulated bags, coolers, and ice packs. Uh, this is a new competitively bid contract for thermal insulated food and beverage bags, coolers, and ice packs for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $350,000. So this is applicable to our summer food program as well? Yes. Uh, the increased uh, spending authority here um, over what you see as historical spending is based on the growth of both the summer feeding program and the breakfast in the classroom right. programs, which require food to be transported. Which reflects our increased commitment to feeding uh, our children. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Questions? All right. Our next contract is HVAC supplies. Uh, this uh, is a contract modification to provide continued purchase of HVAC supplies for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $750,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1.45 million with the uh, three vendors previously approved by the board in January 2016. So just explain to me this first bullet point regarding expanded uh, needs based off of um, ambitious capital improvements and aging equipment. Good evening. The expanded need, what we are saying here, that the older equipment is getting older and we are adding new equipment. For example, 23 schools have been added uh, for air conditioning since FY18. So when you have older equipment on one side and you have newer equipment, additional number. So that's what we are talking about. More and more maintenance and repairs are needed. Okay. Questions? Ms. Causey. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Dixit. So for the this spending authority, um, what types of systems will be supported? They'll be supported. They a typical system consists of distribution, uh, generation, and controls. So this will have parts for controls, for pumps, for motors, for electronic parts, all different kind of parts, for boilers, for heaters, for air conditioners. And how many schools do you know will be supported, or is this on an as-needed basis that? This is for all schools. This supports our shop. Uh, supplies needed by the shop. So it's not necessarily set which schools will receive services. It depends on as needed wear and tear or repairs that come up. Absolutely right. And work orders. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question is along the lines of Mrs. Causey's in that will this spending authority support 100% of the demand for parts in those schools with partially functioning air conditioning? It will support the demand of where we can perform repairs. Mm. There is always a backlog of repairs. There's always need more out there. Sure. But when our technician gets to a school, we'll make sure that technician has part. So I don't know if I answered your question. If your question is, are we going to take care of each and every work order that we get, that's a different question. This takes care of the technician's need when they are in the building for the work orders that they can complete. Okay. So do we need additional, it would be a separate contract, but authority to take care of the labor and other costs associated That's right. with making all of our air conditioning systems functional yes. in schools that have yeah. them? And some of the repairs are not made by in-house forces. They are done on contracts. Mm -hmm. So this contract does not support that. Contractors buy their own 
uh, material and parts. Okay. Thank you. Number nine, excuse me. Uh, storage tanks and related systems. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued use of skilled, certified, and licensed technicians to perform inspections and regular emer and emergency repairs, installations, modifications, upgrades, and preventive maintenance to underground and above ground storage tanks and tank system components for the Department of Facilities Management. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $475,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1.6 million, with the three awarded vendors approved by the board in August 2014. Mr. Dixit, this might be a you question, but it looks like this also potentially pertains to increased needs um, and our need to accommodate them. That's right. So this this contract has some operating funds, as you will see, and some capital funds. So this is for installation of tanks. This is also for repair of tanks and includes preventive maintenance as required under state and federal regulations. So all of that is covered under this contract. Okay. All right, we are at number 10, which is lumber and plywood. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide lumber and plywood for the offices of facility support services and career and technology education and fine arts. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $275,000. Questions? Next contract is modular decking, et cetera. This is a new competitively bid contract for the purchase of modular decking, porches, skirting, and ramp materials for the Office of Facilities Support Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract <clears throat> with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $125,000. Questions? I have none. We'll move on to number 12, on-call fencing services. You want me? Uh, this is a new cooperative contract for on-call fencing services for the offices of facility support services and facilities construction and improvement. Approval is requested for a four-year, eight-month contract with the option for four one-year extensions with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $175,000. Uh, this spending authority is structured on the initial four-year, eight-month term, uh, and uh, this is uh, a Baltimore County government contract, and Baltimore County chooses to exercise their options one year at a time, so we we will have to come back to the board uh, at such time as county government uh, makes uh, authorizes their extensions. Questions? Our last item is number 13, construction of the new Northeast Elementary School package 2A site work. Uh, before uh, before yeah. I request for your approval for uh, this contract, I just want to provide you with some background information. <coughs> sure. Uh, this is one of the 15 contracts that board had approved. This is a construction management job for Honeygo Elementary School. The request is for increasing the contingency of the site work contract by $500,000. The original contract that board had approved for the site work had, had was $10,385,475, and that included a contingency of $941,680. The site work at that site has been extremely challenging. Uh, some of the work that we did in the original uh, contingency required um, compliance with permitting work that Baltimore County had asked us to do, 
and it included a, a trout stream entrance road culvert modification, Japa Road pedestrian bridge, Japa Road widening and improving soil conditions. This is extensive work. Some of it, the scope of work was not known at the time of the award of the contract. So we continued working with Baltimore County to meet their requirements. There are some additional requirements that had to be, that has to be completed now, and this request is for the additional work, which has to do with uh, road widening, uh, some of the acceleration of work that was needed because of the weather conditions that we were in, uh, removal of some subsurface rocks that we didn't know at the time of design preparation, and some modification of bus loops that had to be done because of the unforeseen site conditions. All of this additional work, this, is, this was not known at the time board approved the original site contract. So this is all added work. The scope has been reviewed by the project architect mm -hmm. and has been reviewed by the project manager. Also, I wanted board to know that the overall contingency that board had approved, we are still within that amount. Um, the board had approved a total of 10% of contingency for 15 different contracts. Mm -hmm. We are less than 5% at this time. So there is no additional dollars added to the overall budget, but this sp specific contract is the one where we need more money. Okay. Ms. Head. Thank you. So some of this work um, is in progress, and this is for Honeygo Elementary. It's in my backyard, so I've loved watching it That's um, right. come along. It's been yeah. great. Some of this is in progress. Yes. Some, the widening, yes. um, is to be scheduled, I imagine, before bad weather um, yes. kicks in. Yes. Pedestrian bridge being one That's that right. looks to be complete, yes. but some of the, the rest has been scheduled. Yes, it's fine. Um, any idea on the timing of the, the scheduling, particularly of the widening of A lot Joppa depends Road? on the weather conditions. Mm -hmm. But over a period of next few months, we hope to complete it. Okay. So this is not a retroactive approval then since the... No, we have not spent all the money that board had approved. Been but we know that more requests are coming, more change orders are coming for the work. So we are getting your approval in advance. Well, I think what she was also asking is this is not retrospective in as much as we've begun the work and we need money to be able to finish it or pay it off. Some of it is ongoing and some of it will start. You know, like soil conditions, uh, it is a continuous work. As we find poor soil, we have to add soil cement to it and take the old soil out. If we don't, it has ramifications later on down the road. Ms. Head, if that wasn't your question, I'm sorry. No, it was. So these are discoveries. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that it's occurring later in the process than I would expect, but glad that you're taking care of it now yes. before it becomes a problem. Yes. yes. And it did answer my question with regards to available funds, given the, the contingency has not been expended. Thank you. Ms. Causey. I just wanted to, to say thank you for that background information and for also letting us know how the contingencies are running below yes. on the other aspects of the contract. And I think it is reasonable, given the monsoons that our area has been experiencing, that there would be some difficulties with the site work. Um, so thank you for that extra background information. Okay, so that has completed our list of items. I believe if my tracking is correct, uh, I am looking for a motion to recommend to the full board for its approval items L2 and L4 through L13, excluding for present purposes L1 and L3. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Great, all in favor, please raise your hand. L2 and L4 through L13. Okay, I'd like to hold back um, three, you know, one, three, and four. One we already voted on, but I'd like to hold back three and four. You're adding four, okay. Yes. So the motion would be to approve items L2 and L5 through L13. Second. 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 All in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, it is unanimous. We will dovetail back, or double back rather, to item L3 and L4, which I think can probably be dealt with together, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Causey. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we have staff bring to the full board a one-year uh, contract authority 
on both of those contracts. Is there a second? Second. So I would either ask staff to speak on that now or as to the implications or reserve that for a meeting. Wholesome discussion. Is there any preference? Uh, I think I'd prefer to do it at the full board That's fine. meeting. We'll do that. Um, so the motion has been made and has been seconded. All in favor, please raise your hand. For the record, please note I oppose. Um, and with respect to item L1, which is the digital media instructional resources, I should say that I had time during this um, meeting to go online to Brain Pop and to try to retrace the steps of board member Hen was unable to do so. Uh, I noticed that there is a 25% discount uh, for districts, but that's uh, not with respect to a period of time, that's just over the period of one year. And I also note that to acquire additional information bespoke to the district, one had to complete and submit a contact um, request form that would specify year and would specify number of students. So to the extent that Ms. Hen has additional information to share with you all that would be informative of our discussion, I trust that she'll do so in the hour and a half that we have until we have our board meeting. Great, thanks. That concludes uh, the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee.